look, another shockwave. Do you think I'm gonna buy it? Do you know the answer to this riddle? Shockwave is infamous for his singular eye staring uncomfortably until the show gave him an eyebrow for some reason, and for being the top scientist for the Decepticons. You probably know this by now, so rather than that, let's discuss the origin of this figure class. Coming off the heels of robots in disguise, the warrior class was originally the line for older kids or collectors who liked the look but wanted articulated toys without anything in the way, unlike the more gimmicky oversaturated toy line. But moving to Cyberverse, something was off. Instead of continuing this idea to make the line more broad, Cyberverse threw in those gimmicks to the warrior class, and apparently ruined the very idea. It seemed older kids into the show were unwelcomed until the deluxe class came in even upgraded to be closer to the Praise Generations line. Shockwave is one of the first of four to be introduced, and one of eight key components to feature parts to build a Mac Adams figure. But with that, will Shockwave prove this line to be better than most? Can Cyberverse make up for its awful reputation? I don't know about Cyberverse, but maybe this Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures theme, probably some short series they're working on, who knows. What I do know is that the backdrop is a good image of Cybertron, and the typical shape of the collector line with the box makes me optimistic. It does show you have to buy all eight to complete the Build-A-Figure, which only means Hasbro wants money and is am greedy. Shockwave transforms into a four-legged crab-walking tank, and after seeing this in motion on the show, I can safely say I have nightmares of this above me while I'm sleeping. Just watching. Always watching. It's ridiculous. It's terrifying. It's ridiculously terrifying. A good representation of those horrifying videos with people contorting into unnatural crab people but with a gun on top. But honestly, I think the warrior did it better. The cannon seems to flow a lot better than the laser slapped on, and the stiff hose isn't helping the articulation. However, take the other gun, plug it on top, and you have... another gun. Cool! They don't have to try hard, but I appreciate the mandibles and silver paint on the front legs blending with the back. You could also take the blast effects to attach to the cannon and fight Master Chief with a baby scarab. I do like the texturing on top, smooth but with some thought, and the little antenna sticking out is adorable. Too bad it's on a monstrous deformity. Wait, if Galvatron's over there, then who is this? I don't get the issue with the original Generation 1 mode. Why are people so offended by submarines? Since seeing him more in the show, I actually admire and enjoy this alternative mode. There's something disturbing that actually fits the character, and it's pretty cool. Robot mode. familiar with the warrior class that I question if I even justified the purchase. Granted, it is better than the warrior, but I have it already. This needs to outdo it. In some aspects, I still like the warrior, but the clear winner is the deluxe. Fun tip, if you want, you can remove the gun entirely and disconnect the back to slide out the hose. While we're at it, the hose isn't too soft and just warps into place, so posing gets a little tricky. Good thing you can remove it from the gun to take it off entirely. For now, let's just take it out with what? I feel like I should apologize for this. Wonderful shaping with that striking purple and pink color and classic nods like the chest with an added honeycomb pattern highlighted in silver. An iconic eye with no stupid ah! eyebrow in the way. Ears don't like to stay up, but let's count that as possibility. Speaking of which, there is one amazing crazy advantage this one has. We did it! The warrior has been defeated! Did someone say, Articulation! Head rotates, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, wrist rotates, waist rotates, hips skirts, hips out and in forward, back rotation below, knee bend, foot forward and back, and tilt. So I just checked, only one wrist has the rotational joint, the other one is just solid. Posability is really good. You can tell why this is considered a modern deluxe with so much inspired from the Generations line, even with the same exact Siege ports. In 
fact, you could probably use this with your siege collection without paying a leader price. He even comes with less clutter. Let's take a look at the accessories. Just quickly, he comes with the leg of Mac Adams with a ball jointed knee. He also comes with the mentioned cannon with a porthole and siege port on the front. Looks a little wide and doesn't blend with the arm, but it's functional. He also comes with another gun for no reason. Maybe this is Siege. It's fine, you can use it with other figures if you want, but I will say, I think this was in the Ultimate Class version of the Shockwave table. You can store it in the back. As a bonus and advantage over Siege, he also comes with two blast parts that can bind and can be attached to either weapon. Blast Effect Eye Laser! <laughs> Interesting trick with the feet tucked in the arms. He could punch you and kick you with equal force. How logical is that, you little poopy? Why does he have two knees? Quick note, I did notice on my copy that when I opened it up, the legs were in reverse. And while I couldn't swap it from the waist, I disconnected the lower legs to swap them in place. Keep an eye for the foot tilt, as that'll tell you if it's right. As my first figure in Cyberverse with the Deluxe class, Shockwave combines the aesthetic of that Cyberverse look with the modern generation's quality. So while this is all familiar, combining it feels necessary. It's not too complex for older kids, it seems perfect for a general audience. See, it can work. If you're not into the show, I'm sure you'll still be into the collector line, but as something to try and open up, this is a good idea to release. It is good to know cat ears are logical.